So your beer got infected. Hello everybody, my name is Joshua Garcia. and Today we're talking about beer infections. The thing that will happen to all of us at some point or another, and nobody can really say why or how they came to occur, just what do we do next afterward? So when it comes to an infected beer, there's pretty good ways of telling, you know, if you have a, a white pellicle or mold or something like that growing on the top, that's a pretty clear cut sign something's wrong. That's where you see everybody on the forums or the Reddit thread saying like, hey, this is growing on the top of my beer, what do I do? Can I skim it off? Can I save it? Uh, I don't know. Especially if it's a white pellicle, it's usually wild yeast growing on top of there and it's already inside your beer fully. Skimming it off just means it's gonna grow back. Another thing that could be wrong is with your fermentation. You know, if there's wild yeast present, it might it cause your beer to ferment crazy fast. That croisin could expand up higher than it usually should, clog into the air stopper, and then kind of just explode or make a mess. That happens as well, and that's, that's usually the sign that something is wrong with your beer. Sometimes it comes down to a bad smell, uh, which you might not notice until you go to bottle or transfer to secondary, something of that nature, because, you know, we're not actively smelling the beer when it's in the fermenter. Now, when it comes down to it, really the best way to tell is just taste it, you know? I mean, there's gonna be off flavors and things like that throughout the fermentation process, so don't be too quick to judge. Um, but if you do see some sort of visual or smell something wrong, give it a taste and see where you're at. It could be a good precursor to showing you if you're going to be dealing with an infection. But at the end of your fermentation schedule, after secondary, after whatever it is, and you've gotten ready to go to bottle or keg, give it a taste. And if it's tasting sour, downright bad, something like that, then it's probably going to be something that you're just going to have to dump out and start over with. Now, some people think you can save a sour beer, and rightfully so, I think you can. Um, really, a lot of times an infection is just wild yeast, and when we talk about farmhouse ale and sour ales, that's a lot of times wild yeast being introduced to these beers so that they produce a nice sour ale. I was doing a, an oatmeal stout, and it went bad. I don't really want a sour oatmeal stout, so I don't think that's going to that's gonna work for me. You know, it's not what I'm going for. I didn't build the recipe so that it would taste good to be a sour ale. And the chances that you got an infection that's going to take a wild yeast and actually taste good with the recipe that you built, they're pretty slim. So you can skim off the pellicle, you can put it in a carboy, put it in a keg, try and purge as much oxygen as possible and leave it sit for a long time. Again, with sour ales, they're usually sitting around for like six months to a year. I mean, you might need a full year. Get ready to have that beer just stored somewhere for an entire year. I don't have that space. If you have that space, that's that's awesome. You know, you have an extra carboy laying around. You got a place in your garage, you're just gonna set it up and forget about it. That's absolutely fine, that is up to you. But my personal preference, honestly, if it doesn't taste good, if it wasn't what you were going for, it's time to just move on. Dump it and let's start over. And another point with infected beers, it's not dangerous to drink an infected beer. The pellicle and all that stuff, if you see that and you're worried about your beer, um, give it a taste. If it tastes okay, you can drink that beer. But, um, you know, even if it tastes bad, you can technically still drink that beer. You're just not gonna want to. So if you're worried that your beer is infected but it's tasting okay, you can still drink it. If you're, if you're worried that the mold that was growing or something like that that you skimmed off is going to be harmful to you. That's not usually the issue. Uh, the infections and stuff like that, they're not going to actually cause you bodily harm. You'll be able to ingest them. Uh, it's So that's why it really just comes down to taste, you know, and flavor. If you taste it and it tastes okay, you can drink it. If it tastes bad, you just want to get rid of it. And finally, some tips on just trying to prevent some of these infections. You know, of course, the first one is gonna to be to clean and sanitize your equipment. Make sure you're spraying it down with that sanitizer. Wash everything before brew day, after brew day, um, and get it dry. Try and try and limit um, the amount of water that stays because any sort of standing water is just gonna be an area where mold and bacteria can just grow. So you're gonna to wanna to try and get that out of there. You know, dry it off, wipe it down, leave it out in the sun to dry off, whatever it takes, not allowing any bacteria to form between brew day. The next thing we wanna do is just, again, limit that oxygen exposure. Maybe don't go to secondary if you don't need to. 
Um, if you are going to secondary, try and just limit that oxygen exposure through there. It's just great practice to have. You'll notice a higher quality of homebrew if you just try and limit that oxygen exposure as much as you can. It's impossible to limit all oxygen from getting in there, but it'll help you avoid infections. It'll also just give you a better product. Any water that gets added to your process, if you're doing top up water or anything like that for additional water, we wanna make sure we're boiling that or even just making sure we're using really good filtered water because we don't want any bacteria to be present in that water that would grow inside of our beer. That can be an issue for infection. So if you're adding any sort of water after the fact of the boil, make sure you're boiling it separately using something filtered. That's gonna be a good defense. Next up, just get your timing right. You know, I mean, if you're following your process well, it shouldn't happen that you're getting infections, but um, you know, life happens. It's happened for me where I should have bottled two weeks before I did. I understand life happens, but a good way to kind of just prevent infections from happening is get your timing right, get your uh, gravity readings, and when it's ready to go to bottle, get it in bottles. And finally, a tip for just your brew day is to kind of make lists and be organized. Um, make your checklists, know what you're doing, get everything sanitized beforehand. Um, you know, it's gonna help with all of that process of limiting oxygen exposure, limiting infection, everything, because what'll happen is you'll know exactly what you need to do at what time and, you know, keep yourself on track. A lot of times if you've cooled down your wart and you're ready to go to the fermentation bucket and you've sprayed that out with sanitizer, but then you realize that your auto siphon and hoses haven't been sanitized, well, now you've got your beer sitting at room temperature inside of an open container that's just absorbing oxygen and has a chance to get infected while you're doing that stuff. Um, we could be scrambling, leaking, having, <laughs> dropping something into the beer where we have to reach our entire hand down to grab it out. All those things, you know, they're, they're just silly, but um, they happen. Just make some lists and uh, of everything you need to do and at what times you need to do it. And my biggest tip is to just not be discouraged, honestly. It, you could do everything right, you could do it hundreds of times, but those infections will creep in. They will get everyone sooner or later. Um, if it happens to you, don't worry. You're in good company. It's just a, another excuse to go out there, either buy some more homebrew equipment, or just start over and brew more beer. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, leave a like down below. Comment with your beer infection stories because I would love to hear your stories on beer infections. Make me feel better about myself. But that's where I'm gonna leave it. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.